I'm going to start my lecture right now, but before I jump into the slideshow, I want to show you the images that I'm going to use while I'm demonstrating today. Um, you can find almost all of the images on the shared um, stock images that I've provided through either Google Drive or OpenGraphicArts.com. But there's a couple that are not in there, and I want to explain why. And so I'm going to use the following images, this image of the Eiffel Tower, this image of the Eiffel Tower, uh, my ice cream cone image, and then three images of backgrounds. And so two of these images I pulled directly off of the, no, three of these images I uh, took right off of the stock images website, so you should be able to find them. But these cloud images, I just needed a couple images of clouds and I didn't have them. And so I went to search.creativecommons.org. I chose Google Images and I searched for sky just so I could have some sample backgrounds to use for this activity. And so you might want to pause the video and open up those files before I get started. That's up to you. And so Selections 101, we're going to get started with selections today and before we can do that we need to understand what they are. And they are grouped areas within a layer or multiple layers that have been identified for editing. Selections can be identified by a scrolling marquee or what is commonly referred to as the marching ants. And I've blown up um, a selection right here of this big probably circle area that's been selected on my image, my green image there. And you can see these little black and white da dash marks. Um, if you're inside Photoshop, they'll be moving and they'll be scrolling and it will look like they're kind of marching around in a circle. And that's why some people will call it marching ants. And so if I go to Photoshop, and this is the image I have open, so I'll just grab that for now. If I use any of my selection tools, so I'm just going to grab one right now and make a selection, the area that's encompassed by the selection I could now edit, and I couldn't edit outside that. And then if I zoom in, you'll see that the marquee is moving, it appears that it's moving, um, and it kind of, if you zoom out, looks like a series of marching ants. Selections can be used to highlight or delete content, restrict modifications and edits to a limited area, which is what I like to use it for, or to move content within a document or even between documents. There are many selection tools in Photoshop to help us understand their purpose. I will group them into a few categories, um, but I'd like to preface it by saying I just I made up these categories. They just help me kind of um, divide and conquer and put them into little uh, more manageable chunks. And so we'll first talk about single line selections, then we'll talk about geometric selection tools, freeform selection tools, automated selection tools, and then alternate methods of making selections. So the first type of selection that we'll talk about are single line selections, and it depends on what version of Photoshop you have. These may be contained on your toolbar um, in the top left hand corner, but in the version that I have, many of the tools have been grouped into this little icon down here in the bottom right hand side and when I push and hold on it it opens up like a flyout menu and I can see all the rest of the tools and I'm pretty sure I said this in my other videos but if you're ever looking for a tool and you can't find it and you're just like it's definitely not on the toolbar you can always come down at the bottom there and you can hit the flyout but it depends on what version of Photoshop you have so some earlier versions don't have that flyout. The single row and single column selection tools can be used to quickly make a selection of one row or column of pixels. And the question I get a lot is, well, why would I want to do that? Why do I want to grab just one tiny, like you can't even see what's selected in this image here. Um, there, are, there are times and place to do that. Um, you can use them to isolate pixels if you're trying to select color. So um, whenever you have a selection that's active, you can only work within the active area. And so if you're trying to use the dropper tool to select a specific color, um, you could zoom in and only one row of pixels is selected, so it should be easier to grab that color. If you're working with really small documents, maybe you're making little icons for some web or digital output for a game or for an app or something like that, um, one pixel is going to take up a lot of room in that design and maybe you just want to get rid of a row of pixels or something like that. Um, if your, pic your image is only 25 pixels wide, you'll be zoomed in and you'll be able to see those pixels pretty quickly. Um, you can also, I just found this out recently that people are doing this, you can use it to fill in a selection to create your own custom guides. And so I'll show you what guides are when I jump back to Photoshop, but guides can only be horizontal or vertical, and sometimes you need a guide that's on an angle. If you create a one pixel selection, you could fill it with a color, 
uh, maybe something in contrast to the color you're using. So I have a green image that's on the screen. So if I was going to do it for this image, maybe it would be red um, and it would kind of pop on the red surface. If that was the case, then I could rotate it and I could put it on whatever angle I needed it for my, my project. And then as you'll see if you watch the supplied um, extra demo videos that I didn't record, um, you can also use selections to drag backgrounds to make sure they're all the same color. And you could use the one pixel to drag that out as well. So let's jump to Photoshop and I'm going to talk a little bit about these single row and single column selections before I move on to the next type of selection. So out of all of the selections that we're going to talk about today, you'll probably use this the least. You probably will not use it as much as others. Um, but there's a chance that maybe you'll come across a reason to use it. And so to create a single selection, um, you can push and hold these selection tools and see if your version of Photoshop has it. And so underneath the rectangular marquee tool, which we'll talk about next, um, I can push and hold and in this version of Photoshop, I can create a single row or a single column marquee tool. If you can't find the tool, you can always come to the bottom of your tools panel and push and hold. And then you can have a fly out menu that will allow you to choose more. Now all of my tools are embedded in my tools panel right now, and so I can't have that fly out menu because they're already embedded. When you select, let's do a, a column, a single column marquee selection, you don't have to click and drag, you just have to click. And when you click, it will automatically highlight one column or one row of pixels. And it doesn't look like much now, but if we were to zoom in on it to where we can actually see the pixels, you can see that one column of pixels has been selected. Um, if you, let's create a new layer. If you create a new layer and then you choose edit fill, you can choose to fill it with a color and maybe we want to fill it with bright red pixels. And now I filled the column with pixels, which doesn't really help my design, but if I zoom out, I could use it as a guide if I was trying to line something up to this, this, um, this plane here. Now, if you turn your rulers on, you can click and drag your rulers out to create guides, um, but you can only create horizontal or vertical guides. What you could do is you could do edit free transform after you've created your line, now you could rotate it. So there's a rotate option here on your options bar at the top of the screen. And so you could rotate it, let's say at like a 45 degree angle. Let's zoom out now. And now you've created your own custom guide and you can put this guide wherever you want it to go. So I'm just gonna hold shift and nudge and I can nudge this line into place. Maybe I'm trying to put something on an angle and I want all the text to line up. And then when you accept the change, and we zoom in on the selection, you can see that you now you have a red line that you can line items up on. Now, again, you're not going to use this as often as you will your other selection tools, but there are, there are various options for using it. Let's talk about one more. So I'm going to undo until I get my vertical one pixel selection back. If you choose Edit Free Transform and you zoom in on your pixel, oh, I need to go back more. I don't want to have the red, I want to have the color of the file. So I'm going to keep going back until the red's gone and my layer that I created is gone. And because I want to edit the background layer, I'm going to double click on it and create layer zero so now it's not a background. Okay, now with that those pixels selected or that one column of pixels selected. If you choose edit and free transform, you can, well, let's zoom in here, you can grab the handlebars that constrain the right and left hand side of the selection and you can drag the selection and make it wider. And watch what happens as I do that. It takes that one pixel and it just pushes it straight out to the side. And so as I pull it across, the bottom half looks weird um, because I'm getting banding of color, but if I was trying to make the background a, consist a consistent color and I wanted it all to be the same color white or um, this is actually kind of a cool look with the banding of the clouds on the top, you could use it to drag out the background to make sure that your background is all the same color. And if you watch the other supply videos that I've posted in Canvas, you'll see um, there is a video of a man doing some photo retouching 
on um, on a car. And when you get to that video, I can't remember which um, lecture I've embedded it in, but when you get it, you'll see that he'll make a selection of pixels similar to the way we selected just the one column. And he drags it out inside so that he knows 100% that his entire background is all the same color white instead of having patchy colors of different varying shades of white. 